So this is the Micron 4 carting data logger from AIM. Um, physically on the overview, we've got our screen and our buttons on the front, on the back, connectors, the mounting stud. There you can see the mounting stud with the um, rubber washers. That's how you'll attach the logger to either directly to your steering wheel or to the bracket on your steering wheel. On the back side, we've got our battery cover as well, which I'm going to open up right now just to show you what it looks like inside. One of the first steps when you are ready to install your logger is going to be to open up that battery compartment and go ahead and clip in your 9-volt battery and then close things up. The Micron 4 battery compartment's sealed, so it's very weather resistant. As you can see inside, there's our 9 volt battery. There's just a simple clip on the top. We'll put that back in there and get it buttoned back up. So on the front, we've got our power button. That's the bottom right corner. Top right corner is the memory button. Menu on the top left and the off button on the bottom left. I'll go ahead and fire up the logger now. All right, and this is the main screen that we'll see each time we power up the logger. On the bottom, we've got our lap time, lap count, miles per hour. Along the top is our RPM temperature light number one, the RPM warning light, and temperature light number two. So let's go ahead and talk connectors on the back of the logger here. You'll see at the very top, we've got a connection for the temperature sensor. Beneath that is the infrared lap time beacon receiver sensor, and beneath that again is the expansion port. We use this for the GPS unit, a micron expansion, or a data key. Then just to the right of that, you'll notice the cutaway. That's where we're going to thread our RPM lead through. That's how we're going to pick up the RPM signal from the Spark. So the first sensor we're going to connect will be the temperature sensor. This is the AIM M10 fluid temperature sensor. It's going to go right into the head on most motors and pick up the engine coolant temperature for us. This next sensor is the infrared uh, lap time beacon receiver. Mounts to the cart um, on the outside. Most people will put it on their front fairing. You see there's a hole for a bolt to pass through it there. Um, the other end is the 712 connector. Um, that'll go into the second port on the logger. And then this here is the RPM pickup. The end in my right hand goes through the logger. I'm just going to show you how to thread it through. You'll notice there are two holes in the RPM pickup on the back of the logger. Just pass the wire through once and loop it back through. On the other end of the RPM pickup is a nice clip that you can attach to your spark plug line. So that's what it should look like when you're all set with that. Let's go ahead and plug in the uh, infrared beacon receiver. We just gently press the connector in after we align it and we screw in the threaded barrel. This is the patch cable for our temperature sensor connector. We connect the two plastic ends together. Those are considered uh, 719 connectors. And then we take the 712 connector, align it, press it in gently, and we'll just thread it in there. I didn't get it quite pressed in all the way, so it didn't thread in right away, but get it fixed here. Push a little further, there we go, and it threads right in. So now we've got all three of the basic sensors hooked up. Um, logger's live at this point. You'll notice after I squeeze the temperature sensor for a moment, it starts to go up. So at this point, everything's working. Right now, if it were on a cart and we had the RPM pickup, wrapped around the spark plug wire or clipped on, we'd be able to fire up the cart and watch the RPMs move. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this logger actually configured. I've already got the logger turned on. So what we're gonna do is hit the menu button on the top left and actually get into the menu. We use the arrow keys on the left-hand side back and forth to actually scroll through and enter the different submenus here. So let's go ahead and select the configuration wizard, which is the wrench with the star. To enter a submenu, we hit the top right enter button. To exit, we're going to hit the exit button on the bottom right. So what we're going to do here is actually go into the configuration wizard and I'll demonstrate how to back out by hitting the exit or cancel button on the bottom right. 
Alrighty, so let's go ahead and hit menu and navigate back to our configuration wizard. We're going to hit enter and start the configuration wizard now. The first question is what type of racing are we doing? We have the option of sprint, oval, and road racing. Each one of these options kind of custom tailors the information on the display for the particular needs of that type of racing. I'm a tag racer, so I'm going to hit sprint. The next question is what type of clutch do we have on our cart? Tag cart has a low stall clutch. The other options are gearbox for shifters, high stall clutch, which would be for like a Yamaha clutch cart, and then direct drive if you've got a direct drive cart. Like I said, I'm driving a tag cart, so we're going to select low stall clutch and hit OK. The next question is what temperature unit do we want to use? I'm in America. Uh, so I'm familiar with Fahrenheit. The other option is Celsius. So I'm going to select Fahrenheit and hit OK. The next question, what's our max RPM? Um, I'm on an X30 motor, which uh, 16,000 is appropriate for me. You can go up and down in 2,000 RPM increments. Set this just beyond your max RPM because this is what scales the RPM band at the top of the display. The next setting is the RPM tattle. That's the big RPM warning light in the center. This is the RPM threshold at which point that's going to light up. I'm going to select 15.7 for my X30 and hit OK. The next setup question is which light do we want to light up when our temperature gets above a certain threshold? Um, you can select from light number one, light number two, or to disable that, I'm selecting one. And the next page is what temperature do we want that actual light to light up at? I've got it set at 135. The next section is actually really important. It's the date, time, hour, minute setup. Um, as you get more and more sessions downloaded into your laptop or into whatever computer you're using for analysis, this gets really important. As you know, you can easily make 10 different session files per day, and this is how you're going to go in and differentiate between each one of them. As with all of the other setup, uh, pages that we've had before you can increase or decrease the setting with the arrows on the left and then hit memory OK to finalize your selection. Alright let's go ahead and dive into some of the other features on the menu here. We're gonna go ahead and hit menu and the first option is the backlight. Hit it on just by hitting the enter button. Give me a second while I turn some of the lights off and I'll show you how that looks. This one happens to be the uh, amber backlight useful if you're racing kind of close to dusk. Turn it off just by hitting OK again. The next option is the session mode. This is a great feature that almost nobody knows about. Um, we have the option to use a qualifying setting where if we hit enter on qualifying it's going to give us a session time. Enter the duration of your qualifying time, hit enter, and right before you go out on track hit the enter button again and you'll see we now have a uh, timer with the time decreasing that lets us know how much time we've got left in the session. The next option here on the menu is going to be the minimum lap time. Um, this is going to basically ignore any additional beacons that are on the track beyond um, the one that you have configured. The next option is the track. Um, if we go to a new track, go ahead and add a new track as the last option there. Type in the name and then hit enter. I'm going to back out here because I've got the tracks that I go to already. Um, <clears throat> one of the other cool options up here is the hour meter. If you hit enter, it's going to give you basically just the run time on your engine. And you can select up to four different engines if you've got multiple carts that you use the same logger on. The last option there is the rubbish bin to clear all the test data. Um, I don't want to do that right now, so we're not going to hit that. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our lap time setup. This is how we edit how the lap time beacon is working on the logger. We do that by hitting menu and navigating to the control panel, which is just the plain wrench, and hitting enter. Next, we're going to navigate to the lap split setup and hit enter again. If we're using the infrared or the magnetic lap time sensor, it's going to read total magnetic strips at the top. If we're using the GPS sensor, it's going to show something a little different. We'll address that later. If we've got only one beacon out there, we're fine. If there's more than one, we hit enter and we can set one to five using the arrow keys. Once you're happy, hit enter or back out. So at this point, we're all done with the installation and the configuration of the Micron 4 logger. I've done this today on a tabletop because it's much easier to video here. 
If we were actually installing this logger on a cart, all that would be left would be a couple zip ties to keep the wires from hanging in the way and mounting the logger to the wheel using the 10 millimeter nut. So if you found this video helpful, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll be posting videos just like this one covering both hardware installation and analysis inside AIM Race Studio 2. Also, don't forget to give us a like on Facebook. And if you're in the market for any AIM Racing products, data loggers, sensors, patch cables, GPS unit, Micron expansion, whatever it is, go over to our website, coldgrovemotorsports.com and shop our online store there. We're an AIM Racing dealer and carry their full line of products. If there's something that you need that you don't see on our website, just shoot me an email.